our enduring relationship with magnetism dates back to antiquity. About 2,000 years ago, the ancient Greeks and the ancient Chinese independently discovered Earth's only magnet crafted by nature. It became known as the lodestone, or magnetite. It's an oxide of iron, and the basic properties of the lodestone come from its atomic structure, but how it's magnetized is still a bit of a, a mystery. We think there was lightning strikes hitting the rock and the magnetic fields from the lightning uh, magnetizing the rocks. Chinese innovators used the unusual mineral as part of a device made of polished brass. On its surface, a spoon-shaped lodestone was free to rotate in response to the Earth's magnetic field. It marked man's earliest step toward the first practical application of magnets, the compass. A compass's magnetic needle determines direction by aligning itself with the Earth's magnetic north and south poles. If I place this in a little cup and allow it to float on some water so it's free to rotate, the compass will turn around and align itself pointing at the South Pole. If I reverse the magnet, the compass senses that the pole has changed and points the other way. Reverse it again, it swings back around. By the 13th century AD, the compass changed the face of sea travel, relieving sailors from plotting their courses solely by the sun and stars. When storms obscured the skies, they could still ably navigate. For many of us, our reliance on magnets goes hand in hand with our inability to fully fathom how they work. Magnetism is fascinating because of the mysteries. When you have things pulling, at a distance without contact. Certainly we understand when I push this hand against this hand where the forces are coming from. But when I take a North Pole and bring a North Pole close to it and they push apart, I don't see any contact. And that is always puzzling to people. Well, a magnet is simply an object that attracts iron. It attracts some other objects that are similar to iron, like cobalt or steel, but it does not attract other things like wood, glass, plastic, copper. So it's a very selective uh, attraction for it. A magnet works its magic by extending its force invisibly beyond itself, creating what's known as a magnetic field. Now we can make that visible so you can see it with some iron powder. And I'll cover the magnet up and put white piece of paper on there so you can actually see it. And I'll sprinkle some iron powder, these are little tiny particles of iron that will trace out the magnetic field. It's collecting a lot of powder right between the poles, but looping out into space are these magnetic lines returning to the South Pole, traveling through the magnet again, and exiting the North Pole in a circular looping fashion. Sometimes you'll see a science teacher playing with a magnet. And occasionally they'll cover it with a piece of paper, then sprinkle iron filings on top. This produces a pretty pattern. And they often exclaim, look, the magnetic field lines but what are these magnetic field lines? Simply put, they're an idea visualized. Basically, they are guides which tell us in what direction a compass will point. And this helps scientists predict how things will interact with magnets. In this episode, we'll deal only with lines outside of a bar magnet. Later on, we'll tackle more subtle scenarios. However, for this case, it's quite simple. Here are the rules for drawing magnetic field lines. First, field lines start on a magnet's north pole and end on a south pole. They don't cross. Remember, they tell us the direction a compass points, 
and it can't very well point in more than one direction. Consequently, you can think of the lines as repelling each other. How tightly packed the lines are tells us about the strength of the magnetic push or pull in that area. The more tightly packed, the stronger the force. The lines sort of act like big elastic bands, pulling their two ends together while repelling other lines. We can see how this behavior requires like poles to repel and opposites to attract.